What is up guys? Just the guy on my lunch break is back. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about everything related to substance use, substance abuse, mostly Kratom, mostly Kratom. That's predominantly the topic that we discuss on here. Uh, just a little quick update. Uh, quick mean the operative word there. Uh, I don't have much of an ability to go quick. <laughs> I just don't. My videos always end up more than 15 minutes. Um, I'm a rambler. Yep, that's what I do. Um, but you know, there's some good there's some good sound bites in there. You know, I'm one of those people who talk for 15 minutes, and um, out of that, you'll get some good sound bites. You'll get some good info. Uh, a lot of it's just blah, 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 bullshit. But, uh, well, not bullshit, but filler words, just me talking, kind of like I'm doing now, right? Uh, I've wasted a good 60 seconds of your life already. How do you feel about that? Don't be cross with me. You know, you hit the fucking subscribe button. You're the one that keeps coming back. So, at this point, it's on you. You know, if you keep coming back, you don't like the fact that I fucking ramble, then... I mean... No offense, but it's kind of your fault that it's at this point, right? No, uh, anyway. Day seven. Um, things are about the same for me. Uh, I don't really have any new reporting to do, nor am I really... You know, gonna knock your socks off with any specific topic but uh, a lot of times you know this is just kind of a vlog like a video diary and things and ideas start to come as as they unfold you know as the video unfolds I start to think of this and I start to think of that and I'll talk a little bit about this and then that'll bring up something else and that'll relate to another thing that I'd like to talk about you know I get a lot of that on here um but I get a lot of good tidbits from you guys. That's why I love um, when you guys jump in and comment and tell your own stories and stuff like that because I get so many different people with so many different backstories and past experiences. Um, it's really a cool thing to watch. Um, I've, had, I've been having a lot of people hit me up on Instagram recently, which I think that's cool. Um, if you're interested in going and checking me out on Instagram, I mean, I don't, I don't talk about Kratom on Instagram. Obviously that's just my personal Instagram, you know, um, I don't have some Instagram account dedicated to Kratom kind of like I do this YouTube channel. Um, you know, I, I modeled when I was a younger guy and it's just something that's a passion of mine. I like creating looks. I like editing videos and stuff too. You know, I've edited music. Uh, in the past, I'm a musician, I sing, uh, I've written music, um, I wrote a gospel album back in 2012, 2013, that's still online now, um, it's on uh, a site called Reverb Nation, which is like an independent artist website, so uh, I've done a lot of things in my life, you know, um, consider myself to be uh, a blessed you know and talented person so if you want to check some of that stuff out go follow me on instagram hit me up on instagram it's cory austin official cory austin official no e and cory c-o-r-y a-u-s-t-i-n cory austin official so uh so yeah go check me out on that and uh if you're interested in, in listening to like some of my music and stuff like that I'll put a link for that as well that will take you to the Reverb Nation page. Uh, did all that at home in my home studio at that time. Um, I composed all the music myself, you know, using basically a, a MIDI keyboard and, and guitar on some, you know, program the drum tracks, the bass, lay down the keys. You know, strings, anything you hear, I did that. Uh, I composed the music, and 
edited it all together and you know recorded my vocals and like pro tools and stuff like that so i used to do that i'm that guy i did that i recorded the whole independent album and for a guy who you know didn't have any professional uh training in terms of music and music editing and for a guy who is just self-taught and is in there just figuring it all out on the fly um i think you'd be surprised a lot of my music sounds really good. A lot of it sounds like it should be on the radio, you know. Um, but anyway, I'll drop that link if you're interested. I just want you guys to learn more about me. I don't want people to think that I'm just some guy who, you know, has past drug addiction issues. Or Well, I'm not going to say past. I, you know, I'm seven days off Kratom. Yeah, I'm fucking, oh, that's way in the past, y'all. Fucking seven days, man. I'm good. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Um, obviously, I still have addiction issues. I'll always have addiction issues, whether I'm using or not. So I want to correct myself there. But I don't want you guys. I want you guys to know more about me. I don't want you to think that I'm just some guy with addiction issues. I want you to know about my past. You know, where I come from, who I am, you know, and what I've done, the things that I've done things I used to do, you know, uh, you'd be surprised. There, there's a lot of other interests that we all share together, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, I had a guy say in the comments yesterday, and I wanted to elaborate on this a little bit. He was saying that I think as addicts, you know, sometimes we forget that even before you ever used or even people who have never been addicted to anything and they're just completely sober people. It's completely normal to have days where you're just like, eh, eh, you know. My day's not spectacular, it's just okay. You know, it's not great, it's just average. And I think sometimes as addicted people who are always under the influence of something, we forget that concept, you know. And then when we come off of whatever substance it is, obviously, you know, the bad feelings or the anxiety or the physically, um, physical altering feelings that we might experience obviously adds to, you know, um, an already fragile state of mind, a state of being, okay? And then, but, but the point that he was making is, I think that some people are too quick to attribute that to, you know, pause and, oh, it just takes me forever to get off of it. When, in actuality, some of it could just be that uh, you're just too sensitive to the pain, man. You're too sensitive to living. You're too sensitive to feeling now, you know, and, and you're not used to feeling the full gamut and a full array of emotions that goes along with just life, you know, because whether you're using or not, challenging times are going to come. Is that not true? You know, do any of us really honestly sit here and think that, well, you know, Using these drugs is the problem. You know, we like to compartmentalize shit, you know. Everything would be okay if I could just stop using the drugs. And if I could get off the drugs, my life is just going to be hunky-dory. And I'm not going to have any more problems. I mean, do any of us really believe that that's true? We shouldn't. We shouldn't. Because whether you're using a substance or not, challenges difficulties, troubles in life, tribulations are going to come, right? Even if you're a religious person, you can find in the Bible, you know, life is not without trials and tribulations. It's just not. Um, the difference is it becomes harder to cope when you get on this roller coaster of, you know, heavy use and then, you know, the valleys are lower. The peaks are higher, but then the valleys are lower. You know, um, and it's the valleys that we become terrified of when we're addicts. 
Peaks are fine, dude. I'm good on the peaks, bro. Yeah. Peaks are where it's at. Where, but you can't stay there. Because if you stay there, then you're what? You're addicted. You're an addict. All right? So, you know, it was just a really good point that he made. You know, and it really got me thinking. Like, you know what? Most of my adult life, I've been using substances um, to alter kind of my sense of self and sense of how I feel from uh, on a day-to-day basis, you know. Um, and the truth of the matter is, I don't really know what it's like to be sober for an extended period of time, you know. Um, but I do know one thing. I know that once I've been there for a while and once I've remained sober for a while, my problems aren't just going to magically disappear. No. What's going to happen is, as a human, I'm going to utilize one of the greatest human abilities of all time, and I'll adapt. I'll adapt, and I'll learn to cope with trials and tribulations as a sober-minded person as opposed to be in this altered state, you know? And uh, the person mentioned, too, and I want to—I just want to end on this. They mentioned, too, how really we say the highs, you know, the peaks are so much more when you're using something, but um, really, in some ways, that's not true. And he used an example of, you know, when he, when he came off of, I, I think it was Kratom, I don't remember all the details to his comment, but he was saying how... Uh, he became much more emotional, like when you watch a movie or just whatever, you know, it was, it just couldn't stop the tears from flowing. And uh, I found that very interesting. I was laughing on the inside, not at him, but laughing because I experienced the same thing. And it's quite funny, you know, because I'm kind of a man's man. Um, but I'm also a very emotional guy, I'm an emotionally in tune guy. And, uh, this past weekend, my wife and I watched this movie, um, it's either Woman and the Sea, or Young Woman and the Sea, or something like that, it's on Disney+, Plus, but it's a, based on a true story about the first woman to ever successfully swim across the English Channel, and this is like, you know, back in the 1930s, or something like that, a long time ago, but at that time, it was only men who had accomplished that. And uh, there was this young woman who was, you know, a high school swimmer, and I think she did swim in college as well. Um, made it to the Olympics at one point, but didn't win in the Olympics, but she was actually an Olympic swimmer as well. Decided that she wanted to be the first woman to swim across the English Channel. Great flick. Great flick. Great movie. Uh, not sad at all. Just very touching, heartwarming you know, if you want to call it that, inspirational, that sort of thing. I could not stop fucking crying. And when I say crying, I don't mean, (laughs) you know, I don't mean like I'm hurting crying, but every time the music would start to swell and there would be this moment where, you know, there's this crossroads for the character and they, you know, got to this point in the movie where it was just, you know, do or die or, you know, what whatever it was, there were so many moments like that in that movie and I was there for every one of them just like, you know, where you feel the lump in your throat, you know, um, and my eyes welled up with tears multiple times. And I and I sat there and I thought to myself, you know, if I was on effing 30 grams of Kratom per day, if I was, you know, burned out of my mind on Kratom right now, this would absolutely not affect me in any way, shape, or form, right? But because I'm off of it, and because it's out of my system, you know, because I, I know I've only been off for seven days, but for those who haven't followed my story, I've only been off for seven days, but I was tapering 
for quite a long time. So I've been at very small, minuscule amounts for several weeks now. So I don't have any more Kratom on board in here. You know, I've moved past it. And so the emotions, it's just like full frontal emotions and everything's firing on all cylinders now. You know, the sex drive is back. You know, the, the ability to be able to feel emotions are back. And when he said that, you know, it really, I, I kind of got a chuckle out of that because that's so true. And it made me think, well, you know what? Maybe the peaks that Kratom gives me that I perceive as peaks, maybe they're not really as high as the sober peaks. You know what I mean? Um, because that feeling of like, you know, and again, the movie wasn't sad. It was happy. It was inspiring in a way. You know, I was being moved by that, you know, being moved by the, the inspirational nature of this movie. Uh, but the manifestation of human emotion that came along with it was, was way, way different from what it would have been had I been on a high amount of freedom. I know that. So my body is now allowing me, my mind is now allowing me to feel those emotions, to feel that raw emotion, you know, that is a natural part of life, you know, and I want that, I want that back, you know, um, and uh, I, because I'm a person, this I'm a passionate person, I'm very passionate about a lot of things in life, and I want that back, you know, I desire that, so that's something to look forward to if you come off a of crater. Guys, if you enjoy this sort of content, if it helps you, uh, my wife's birthday was this past week, so I got to stop and get some stuff done. Um, so I'm going to make a few stops here in a minute. So I got to go. But if this stuff helps you, hit that subscribe button. Um, let me know what your story is. Use this channel as your accountability mirror um, to fix whatever your situation is. No judgment here. If you're still on it, if you're not planning to come off, yeah, I don't judge on here. I don't. Uh, you know, drug addiction has to be self-diagnosed anyway. Nobody can tell you that you're a drug addict. Anybody can tell you, but until you realize it and you take the first step in admitting it, nothing's going to change for you. And some of you listening to me may not be an addict. I don't know. I don't know you. Right? You might just be, well, I'm using this stuff, great. I'm, I'm not using it all the time. I only use it every once in a while. I feel okay with that, but I like listening to this new talk. You know? <laughs> or, or this guy's got a good voice or whatever, whatever it is. Why, why ever you're listening to me. You know? Um, either way, like the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Love you guys. Gotta go. Have a good weekend. Peace.